Right, it's May, 11th or 12th, I don't really know, I can't remember. And I've um, parked here to be placing flowers at St Augustine's Church, Borough Green. On my way home, but I thought I'd stop in and uh, just put a few flowers around. I expect some of you follow me will know which graves. I'm heading for straight for them this time, rather than walking right round. There will be others that I can't recognise. I mean, for example, that could be one for all I know. There's Alberta. Sometimes I don't bring her right up the lane. And here's the graves of Edward. Edward Oak. Mary Oak, Stephen and Mary Oak over there. And this is Sheila. With some flowers. Over there for a minute. Stephen Oak and Mary Ann Briggs. In there. My times three great grandparents. From Borough Green. And then we've got Stephen Oak and his wife Mary Ann Brown. They might have been from Dunningham originally. And then you've got... I'm not sure if this is a daughter. I'm not, not, never really quite sure. Um, I think it will be a daughter of, of um, Stephen or Edward. I'm not sure, actually. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, she was, actually she was only 30, oh no, the, wait a minute, she died age 82. No, I think she was uh, one of Stephen's children. Yeah. So I've got some colourful flowers for now, just to brighten up, brighten up this graveyard. Look, some pretty, pretty flowers. Feels like it might thunder in a minute. Sounds like they've got a fight going on over there. I'll go and have a look through the gap. I normally always, they always not seem to know when I'm here. They, they, um, they sometimes come in, the girl, woman does. I hope she's all right. But they might have a fake because they put a big marquee up and everything. They invited me one year. I'm a bit shy and I got these huge cold sores come up anyhow. <sighs> yeah, it does look like a marquee, doesn't it? In the manor house. Could be a wedding. Yeah, they did invite me once. There's a green carpet down and everything. The elite in there. The elite. There's our campers, my camper van that lowering the standards. I'll come and do some pictures and I'll do a video while it's quiet. We're related to many people in this graveyard that married in into the families. And uh, I've got a first cousin called she was called Amelia, shortened to Millie, and she married a local lad here. She was, she'd been in the land army from London. She met him when she came here. He was local. Ernest Smith. But look how much colour it adds when you put a few flowers around, isn't it? Look at that, isn't that lovely? Shows the oak graves are cared for and about. They normally hear me talking and she'll come and find me. She always says to me, let me know. Now, on the Lockwood side, he's also got connections to Burr Green. There's a Jaggard there who died 
aged 21 in 1916 and uh, I, I will look it up one day, I will look it all up we've got bollards in the family I don't know what that means, how they got those there, whether that's a type of repair work going on. Could be, couldn't it? Eliza Miriam Smith, born 14th of December 1900, went to sleep the 27th of January 1960. But I was eight on that day. God be with her till we meet again, and a beloved father, John Taylor Smith, born 15th of May 1899, went to sleep 25th of November 1972. Also, Frederick Louis Smith went to sleep the 4th of April 1969, age 74. I just wondered if there... Any of these are connected. There's a Chitty Smith, 1934 to 2004, age 69. Arthur Smith. More pledges here. So I'll come back and take pictures of this grave because these could be connected to Millie's in-laws. Oh, it's lovely though, isn't it? Here. It always feels thundery when I'm here though. Um, the thing is, with that Smith boy, they were also from Wesley Waterless quite a bit. So, Claydon's here, there's a John Claydon, two Claydons, a Mary Claydon. We're also connected to Claydons somewhere in the tree. Okies. I'll keep trying to come back, Okies. I will. I'll keep trying. I've got a flower for the pot. Is the statue still there? Yeah. It's got no flower in the pot, though. I'll keep one of these for that. God, it's got, I'm quite hot, you know. Who's that? Starvis. Died in 1918, age 89. Wasps, bees and ants remind me of this place. Oh, don't really need this coat on. I'll take, go and take it off in a minute. I'm going to have a drink of water as well. So you can see my Smith Grays all bright. If you look up there, not my Smith Grays, my Oak Graves. If you look up through there, you can see the ancestors. My times three great grandfather Edward and his wife Mary, Mary Ann Briggs. Behind him is Dad, Stephen, and Mary Brown. And then a, re a close relative, Mary Oak. I do know the connection with her, but I just can't remember it off the top of my head now. I do a video every time I come. Because it's always slightly different when I come. There's more information. And the idea really was for me to stay up here a couple of days and study it more. But there's, I haven't organised anywhere to stay and I'm quite tired actually. Now here's a Jaguard, Marguerite Jaguard, 1920-2005, to Mildred Jaguard, 1914-2012. Jaguards are connected on Dave Lockwood's side of the family. Oh, I'm baking, you know, with this coat on. I'm going to take it off in a minute. We've got a few Starvuses in here. Cool, it's cool in here. That's cool in here. Right, let me just take my coat off a minute. There's a horse over there listening to me. Hello, horsey. All right. Mad Sheila's here. Remembering the ancestors. Yeah. Oh, 
know, it's too hot. I think I got that on video. I'm in front of your arm. Matt, smile. You can see me, I can see you. Yeah. That's it. Come here, smile. Come on. Come on, Orsi. Ah, hello. There's a walk through here, you know. Don't break those flowers, Sheila. That's a lacy home. I've never been on this walk down here. That's why I needed to stay up here, really, and do some proper investigations. But I've got horrible cold sores now. Horrible cold sores. Yes, where all the well-off people come and have a party. She did invite me one year. She said, you're welcome to come to our, our summer garden party, she done. But I, oh dear, I couldn't. I'm, I'm not really, I haven't got any confidence, but I'm always scruffy when I'm up here. You know, I'm always really scruffy when I'm up here. Like I said, um, Ernest Smith might be buried at Wesley Waterless. This is Sheila rumbling around in the graveyard at Borough Green. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't at Wesley Waterless. And somewhere around here we've got um, a starling girl. She's remembered inside the church with the effigy. She's connected to William Oak. There's a sharing of something. And I worked all that out, but I can't remember again. Can't remember. There's another pledger. There's another Jaguar there, look. George and Joan Evelyn Jaguard. 2003, age 83, and 2016, age 90. Another Jaguard, Dave, George and Joan. <sighs> yeah, their connection is um, something I trace through the Isaacsons. They've got Isaacson connections um, that Dave has. Through his um, great-grandmother, his great grandmother was um who was she again? His great grandmother was Phoebe Chapman from Swaffham Bullbeck. That's where we've got they've got their connections here. They are very much entrenched here as well. So it's all rather exciting, everyone, isn't it? Yeah, he might not have been buried in this churchyard, see, Ernest Smith, even though they lived here. I mean, he died in about 2005, I think, just before I, me and Zara came up, before we decided to go on this tree trip. She might have wanted to go on back to London, look, where she was born. Another Jaguar there, I think. <laughs> A couple of bottles of beer there.
probably feel I'm going to get attacked by lots of ants. Well, and this is over there. It's not in this corner. But there's our lovely St Augustine's. There's a lot of documentation about the church, which is, I've recorded and written about and collected items on over the years. It's all... There's lots more to be placed on the tree yet. Webs we're connected to. There ain't many we ain't, to be quite honest. Yeah. I wonder if it'll be open today. Last time I had to ring her. And she said, oh, you should have let me know you were coming. Right, here's John and Eleanor. Ellen, I mean, they, um, she was an oak. Her father was Robert and he ran the bull in. She fell asleep July the 13th, 1924, aged 75. John Bridge fell asleep 28th of January, 1919, aged 73. Zara cleaned this grave up with the same pot there. Look, it's been there for years. 13 years at least. Right, I'm just going to turn off. I put a few flowers on this one a minute. Over and out. <laughs> 